Welcome back to another video and today we're going to get started with code review to find vulnerabilities. I'll share with you how to get started, a general methodology, ways to improve and some useful resources and tools too. Just before we dive in though, I should mention that we're going to be looking at code review from a security perspective to identify weaknesses and vulnerabilities. So this is a little bit different to how code review is carried out from a development standpoint by software engineers. Pardon the interruption, AI tools can be super handy they can help you write a poem, solve captures, and even write code. But is that code secure? Well, AI is only as good as the data it's trained on, which means vulnerabilities in code could be there as it's generated or written. But that's where Sneak comes in. Sneak makes it fast and easy to secure code, whether it's being written by you or generated by AI. And here's how it works. You use your AI tools to generate code and put it into your IDE, and Sneak scans that code, flagging vulnerabilities in real time. You then get recommended fixes for those vulnerabilities that you can apply with just a single click. And so whether you're using AI or writing code yourself, you can give Sneak a try for free today by going to sneak.co forward slash the cybermentor. And of course, there is a link in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first up, what is code review exactly? Well, in the context of security, code review helps us identify weaknesses and vulnerabilities within applications. And you might be thinking, why? Can't I just fuzz and test the live application to find issues? Well, of course you can, but understanding the environment in which the application is operating and looking at how input flows from sources to sinks and the journey that it takes to get there, which can include things like security checks and going through middleware, could unveil the need for a payload that is unique to the application or a variation on a pattern that hasn't been seen before. It might be that multiple inputs are needed or the attack is a second order attack and therefore scanners struggle to find it. So code review is a useful skill to develop, especially if you're on the hunt for CVEs or looking to contribute to open source projects. So how do we get started? Well, let's talk about the methodology first. Most of the time we have an application and we want to look for sources and sinks. Sources are things like user input and sinks are things like dangerous functions that can execute the input as code. Most famously, we have the eval function. If you're just starting out though, what I'd recommend doing is two things to prepare. First, try to understand the structure of the application and its source code. For example, how is the routing handled? What does the input look like? And the general structure of the application. Second, what dangerous functions exist within the technology that you're working with. With PHP, for example, we can find a list to get started with here and start to learn about what these functions do and how we can exploit an application that is using them. It is also worth mentioning at this point that these are not the only things we're on the lookout for. As we're trying to understand the application behavior, we also want to look for risky things that the developer might have done. Maybe there is some hard-coded backdoor for admins or input that's stored in the DB and then saved to a .php file, which can then be executed later when the page is called. So really our goal is to understand the application. And once we understand it, vulnerabilities are relatively easy to find. Later on in our journey, we can dive more into different vulnerabilities, their patterns or signatures, and deeper behavior of the application. But I think this is enough for us to get started, so let's find a nice snippet of code to take a look at. So here we are, and I have some code that I got ChatGPT to write for me, and then we're just going to review it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step through it. And of course, in larger applications, you probably want to break it down into subsets of functionality or into some logical sections. Um, but we're just going to review this whole code. And as we step through, we have a few things that we want to achieve. We want to identify all of these sources or inputs. We want to identify all of the sinks or outputs and then identify any middleware or the route that sources take to their sinks. So I think up here we can ignore these includes and we can ignore the express information 
and here we come down to MySQL connection setup. This is probably our first finding, something that you'll run into a lot, and that is hard-coded credentials. So we don't really want to see this in our source code, although it's fairly common to see usernames and passwords and other sensitive information like secrets or tokens or keys hard-coded. So this is something that we would note down straight away. As we keep going down, we have our connection to MySQL, and then we have a sanitize input function. And when I see this function, I think, ah, this is to do with security. This could impact the application and how it behaves. So probably what I'd do is I'd add this to my notes to review later on. As a general rule, especially on my first pass, I try not to dive into anything too deeply. Otherwise, I find that I'll lose all of my time going into a rabbit hole. I want to review the whole application first and then get a better understanding of what areas I need to put my time into. So we'd note this down to come back to later on. As we come further down, we can see some of our first sources. So here we have username, and this is the request.body.username, and then we have an email, request.body.email, and of course the password, request.body.password. Here, further down, we can see that we're using bcrypt to hash the password, and then if there's an error, we return error hashing password to the user, otherwise the password becomes the output hash. And then here we're going to insert the data into the database by the looks of it. And this is our first sync. So for example, here we have insert into users and we have username, email and password. And the first thing to notice is that this is a dynamic query. So it's not parameterized. It's not a prepared statement. We're actually taking this variable and placing it straight into the code. So mixing data and code is bad practice. And that's something to be on the lookout for. And there are lots of vulnerabilities like SQL injection that arise from mixing data and code. And we come back here and we also see another sync here. So we see this error.sql message. Now, we obviously didn't see any particular input that was SQL message. Maybe we have control over this or partial control over this, or maybe we don't. If our username input, for example, becomes part of this error.sql message, then maybe we can get cross-site scripting, but we need to go back through and understand how this is formed and what inputs can be used to influence it. So those are our two sinks. All right, so let's come back up. And what we want to do is check to see whether this username and email is exploitable. So we can see that they're both using this sanitize function as middleware. So if we scroll up, we can now scrutinize this function and take a look and see whether it's effective. So we're essentially doing data dot replace. So it's checking for keywords like select, insert, delete, update, drop, and alter. And whenever we do this kind of function, there are some things to think about. So is it done recursively? Is everything in there that's needed to be in there? Is it case insensitive? And there are generally just a lot of edge cases that can bypass this kind of thing. So what this is gonna do is when we pass in some data, if it finds the select keyword, it's going to simply remove it. And since we have the G flag here, this is a global flag. So if we have multiple instances of select, it's going to get removed. And also we have the I flag as well. So this is gonna be case insensitive. So for example, select, like this is not gonna work because it's case insensitive. Or if we do something like select, select, it's going to find all of them. Notice that it's not removing things like special characters and also some keywords like union, for example, are also missing. Something I would test for here is whether it's recursive. So we know that the global flag is going to find all instances of the keyword select, for example, but I don't know whether it's going to find select here, remove it, and then the outputs will still be vulnerable, something I would have to test. And the key thing to remember here is that some scanners might be fooled by inadequate input sanitization and Sometimes they might not, but what we want to do is identify this as a weakness. Now, even if this isn't exploitable, if you're an AppSec engineer or if you're working as part of a development team, maybe suggest that they follow the standard best practice or the normal way of sanitizing input. And I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how to do this, but I suspect we want something like return 
mysql mysql dot escape data and we probably want to trim this as well so something like this of course check the documentation check the best practice but again when we see something that is a little weird even if we can't exploit it think about what the right way or the standard way that's widely accepted to do things is and then try and implement that instead and of course down here as well we'd want to update this statement and then maybe we would want to try and make sure that we escape this output as well so that we're not just putting raw data into this alert box. But very quickly you can see that we've identified some issues and some sources and sinks and some middleware that might be faulty and this is the goal of code review. Understanding the application, how it's behaving and how the data is flowing between different branches of code. So now when we are looking at code we can look at what middleware or functions are being used for security and determine if they are standard libraries or custom written, are they applied consistently across the code base, written securely and following the best practices, and understand the context around how code is reaching the function and what's being returned. Now to start with, of course, you're going to be looking for low hanging fruits and a lot of tools can detect these issues automatically. So what I recommend is instead of using vulnerabilities as a measure of success, use understanding of the application instead. Think to yourself, do I understand how this application works? Can I follow the code? And the more you do that, the more likely you are to find hidden weaknesses, risky behavior, and ultimately more vulnerabilities. One more thing to think about is consistency. Code review is a skill that requires time to learn and eventually master. So if you are consistent with it, then over time, you'll be able to reap the rewards. I recommend you step through the code manually first and then add tools later on to see what you missed or if they help you find new areas of the application to explore. So where do we go from here? I usually recommend that you start out with code snippets, but actually this site, sourcecodester.com, has a ton of projects and many of them have critical vulnerabilities waiting for you to find. Just be aware that when you're working with code from an untrusted source, you might be dealing with something that has a backdoor or something malicious inside, so take precautions, use a virtual machine, etc., etc. Another resource that I'd recommend to get started is Pentester Lab. There is a free introduction here with some code for you to review. And unfortunately, the rest of the exercises for the code review badge require a subscription, but if you can afford it, it's definitely worthwhile in my opinion. Pentester Lab is a great platform in general if you're interested in taking more steps into web application security and web app pen testing. And that's it for this video. I hope it helps you get started on your journey into code review and I will catch you next time.